Greetings, you person who currently thinks they're watching YouTube, and welcome back to Cosmeteer with me, Lathrix, and of course, welcome to the day where we finally start using some proper energy-based weapons. In the past, I've stuck mostly to our heavy cannons and a few missiles here and there, but today, the weapon I really, really want to get my hands on is this, the Ion Beam Emitter. With this, along with the Ion Prisms, apparently you can make utter powerhouses of crafts. Honestly, every time I've seen the enemy use it, I've been a little bit underwhelmed, but I feel like it might be a matter of us utterly destroying the enemies in this sector at the moment. We are going to be jumping to the next very, very soon, but before that, I really want to try out the brand new weapon. It's time to make a zinch based ship, all blues and golds, and let's see if we can make something a little bit devastating. Now, apparently, this has actually been nerfed since I started playing this game. The range, I think, is the only thing to, to have been changed, maybe something else, but the range has been heavily reduced because before it was a little bit too extreme. So how I believe this works is you have the ion beam emitters themselves, they can then all fire into the beam prisms, and then from the prisms you can redirect them into one single pulse of damage, or a couple of pulses. So I'm thinking maybe two, because then we'll have a nice, very overwhelming looking bit of damage. Right now, we also have a true excess of crew. Uh, the Corn's Forge is currently housing 96 crew members, and if we go over to the station, we can buy pretty much everyone. We are completely done with the zone, and we are currently reaping the rewards. So, let's build a brand new ship, and I'm thinking I would like this one, similar to our birdie birds, to maybe be a diagonal ship. Maybe. It's a bit hard to tell exactly how we're going to do this, to be completely honest. So that would connect those two and then fire it along, I believe. Maybe I should, you know what, for a second, I'm going to go into the creative mode just to make sure I understand how these work before I end up building something which is completely non-functional. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now the really interesting thing is this, you can set it so these we cancel, so currently I have an aim ion prism directly into that one. If we turn that off, that then becomes its own firing piece. So you could have just a row of these things. And I believe if you don't give them a target, they'll target different parts of the enemy ship. So against smaller enemies, this would rapidly break them up. That is really, really cool. I'm glad I looked up how these work. And you can also have them facing weird directions like this. So I believe one last little test and then we'll get back into building the actual ship. This is more for me than for anyone else, to be perfectly honest. But I would like to make sure this actually works. Yep, yeah, that works. Okay, I've got to be honest, that is incredibly cool. Okay, we know it works. Let's get back to the game. Hey everyone, Future Lathrix here. So something that past Lathrix didn't know at the time is that these lovely things, the ion beams, if you take a look-see, have a fall-off. Essentially, every beam you feed into them weakens the overall damage that the beams do. So the first beam will do 100%, but the second beam's only doing 75, the third 56, and so on and so forth, until it becomes less and less effective. Now, thankfully, Eventually, Pastel Athrix does notice this and make some corrections, because for a while he has all of his lasers all feeding into only two of these, and that means that these are actually very, very weak. The beam's damage is drastically reduced. He does eventually increase that to three, which massively increases the effectiveness of the overall vessel. The other thing that he fails to do a little bit in this episode is do some proper armor. There we are, armor weaving. He doesn't quite do it correctly and forgets because he was doing the shape too much. It didn't really play a big role in the video. It does get fixed though before the next one. So don't worry, he's learning and slowly becoming future. Now, back to the past. Actually, future future Lathrix here. Before I let you go, I just want to say a massive thank you to all the support Cosmeteer is continuing to get despite the delays. This will be the last Cosmeteer video of the year because, well, I'm now having a little break to visit family and host some family from overseas because it is the holiday season. So I really do hope you all have a lovely holiday season yourself. I will be back very, very soon next year, back just before the new year so I can start recording properly. There is a slight delay in videos over the last week due to a pipe bursting in my new house and us having to scramble 
to fix that. So a great start to the new recording schedule, but as you can see, the videos are already a little more plentiful, and hopefully that will go on to the next year. And as always, you know, likes and comments really help out the algorithm and help me keep being able to make these videos, which I love so, so much on the channel. All of the support is really heartwarming, and I thank you so, so much. And now, have a lovely new year, and into the past before the new year happens. I have no idea when this video is going live. So I think I am going to go with a diagonal ship idea, because one idea I have for design is something like this. Having essentially a chamber in the middle of the craft, because I think it would look more dramatic. This then shoots out into an opening at the front, which is all heavily armored and everything else. It goes along like that, almost like a pike or some kind of spear tip. Or a bident, I suppose, because we're going to have two spikes, one on either side. So what I'm thinking is something like this. So you have two sets of three on both sides. These will be moved into position to feed these two main prisms. These two main prisms then can fly directly forwards. We just need some protection here which is something we've seen from countless of our enemies, and finally we're going to try and do ourselves, so probably a stack of small shields or heavy shields along the walls I'm going to build here, and then housing and generators. There's the thing, I don't actually know how much power these things really need. Let's look at, look at the stats. So I am blind. Power usage, 1.25 per second. And a medium reactor gives... 4.5, okay. We're gonna need four medium reactors then. Actually, perfectly, we're going to need four medium reactors just for the weapons. Wow, this thing is gonna be a beast to power. So I'm thinking that. This thing's gonna be massive. I thought we could actually get, I, I honestly thought we could get away with this thing being small, then thrust us down here at the bottom, maybe a couple of small ones at the side. Housing there, command there in the center. Yeah, this thing's going to be very expensive. Thankfully, we have a lot of enriched... Actually, I thought we had more than that. Oh, does the forge need to go out and collect some corpses still? Yeah, there's some corpses I still have left around. You know what? I'll go and do that while I'm building. Feels a bit weird allowing this first section to be built before everything else, but I want to make sure everything's working, so... Just fire these ones at the very back. Beautiful. So here's an issue I'm having. The weapons, if I try and aim at a target, have the chance then of clipping the armor. So what I'm going to need to do, move you out of the way first, is have it so that these can only fire forwards. There we go. So I'll have to have this craft move. Oh, I don't like that. You know, I actually really don't like that. What we could do instead, then, is have the ion beams at the very front, but that'll make them INCREDIBLY vulnerable. Having them back here would be so much easier to protect with shields. Oh, I don't like... I do like them auto-targeting. That I find just incredibly fun-looking. I don't know which to go with. Well, we can definitely have this thing running 24-7, which is good. Nah, well, you should be a little bit more careful then right now. So the main thing is this thing's going to have to be able to turn quickly. Oop. Okay, let's uh, turn the weapons off for now. And give it some backwards thrust. Which I guess I'll put here and here. It's going to be a really weird looking thing by the end. It kind of looks like a ribcage from a distance in my opinion. I was this years old when I realised I could do all of them at once. There we go. How about something like this? So we have two spikes here. Then what end? The two major spikes there. Yeah, you know what? That could look good if I actually shape it properly. We need a lot of very expensive stuff for this craft. Next step, defending the main weapon, and actually defending the whole thing. Right now, this is a skeleton, and needs the rest of its stuff. We can also potentially add some point defenses scattered around, just because we do have so many generators. So, if we're going to do it the original way, I was saying, it would be... Blueprint mode, thank you. 
armor down the middle in a way we'll have to test out where the lasers actually hit and then small or large probably just small shields just kind of staggered like this maybe kind of like a pincer in a way Then armor going around the side here, like a flourish. So I'm thinking like that. Then spiking back up there, spiking out there, and spiking down. Actually, you know what, I kind of like that. It's still kind of bug themed like everything else, but it is quite brutal looking. But I'm hoping I can put the armor a little bit more forwards. So currently they're going like that. It's annoying that in the blueprint mode it doesn't show the current um, positioning. If I just fire one of these weapons very quickly, if I fire those two. Thank you. There we go. Now even in, in the blueprint mode we can actually see what's going on. Could I get away with that? Could even have armor down. Oh no, we couldn't. Could we? Wow, we could space them one further out, which seems counterproductive, but then have a layer of armor going down the middle. That would really cause problems, as we've seen in the enemy railgun ships, which have attacked the Malal's Will, which have completely stopped our cannons by doing something similar, because trying to get a shot all the way down there is nigh impossible. And currently, this thing turns and moves incredibly quickly. So aiming it won't be too difficult, just very um manually intensive okay let's clear this blueprint i want to see if this will burn no it won't okay how about oh it looks so cool as well Ooh, can i get away with this fan Fantastic. Okay, that's what we're doing. That is 100% what we're doing. Let's go little spikes all the way along. Do these structure pieces actually provide any real defense? I know you can hit them, but do they really stop a projectile? Well, I've got them all in the core anyway. Do I know what to do with this chunk here? I guess that could just be basic storage. I am lacking in thrusters facing in this direction, which is actually a minor issue, but in all the little test runs I've been doing, this thing still turns plenty fast. So it should be more than able to target enemies. Looks a bit like a barracuda in my head right now, but maybe I'm envisioning the wrong fish. I'm starting to see these front dots as eyes, and it's starting to look creepier and creepier, like even more. Yeah, Zinch's thing is getting really creepy. Oh. And apparently we have a corpse with us. So obviously this isn't yet finished. The back section is basically just completely undone right now. I may add some missiles or some point defense there. But I really want to check out our weapon versus a shielded target. Now pretty much every enemy in this location has been shielded. So I'm really hoping this is one as well. And nothing too chunky. I've also added a couple more uh, beam emitters. Which I haven't really tested out either. So let's see what happens with this then. Okay, so... This is an Omen, a rank 10. It does have a large shield generator and a small shield generator. So, probably want to get about here since it has cannons. Yeah, cannons and some heavy lasers. Yeah, we don't get too close to it. It does also have missiles and by the looks of things, some EMP as well. So, I'm a little bit concerned there. Let's just see how we go. Okay, backwards thrusters are on. Both of our beams are going and down goes the shield. There we are. Okay, that didn't take too long, actually. We normally, of course, would have EMP support from the Ravens, or eventually I may add missiles to this directly or something like that, but we'll see. I'm also noticing one of our beams are having problems, and I think I know why. It's because I changed the crew settings. Okay, that's a problem I'll fix very quickly. All the other beams, though, are going just fine, which is what I wanted to see. Yeah, a couple of the new ones I added aren't being uh, manned properly. Okay, the other shield is going down. It's interesting that we're... Yeah, we're not quite as fast as this thing. We're trying to move back, but not quite making it. Okay, hopefully that doesn't get too much closer. 
Oh, we have half the enemy. Our armor is held. Our shields have held. Yeah, the cannons were not good enough against us. Okay, now we're backing off into position. Now there's a little bit more damage has been done. I was really hoping these two um, huge thrusters there would be enough, but apparently not. Okay, not a bad showing at all for its first outing, especially since it's incomplete, and I did notice some problems, which I will fix momentarily. Pop. So I was looking at some of the problems this thing had, and ultimately it came down to two things. First of all, these generators were being overtaxed, these two specifically, but also the jobs were all over the place. Some of the people down here were jumping, literally going out of the ship to try and do stuff over here. That's now been solved, so now the weapon is firing constantly. Okay, so I'm going to paint this thing up, then we're going to do a dual fight with the Malal's Wrath and come up with a name for this thing. Something to do with Zinch. Zinch's horror. Angry mouth. Spud. So for paint, I'm thinking something like this. So each of the spikes and extremities having a lighter colour than the base, all going into the core here. Then we'll have a gold trim and try and make these look raised. I've seen it done so well in designs of other craft. I don't quite know how to pull off the same effect. I've tried to study them and everything else to see how to make it look like one bit's above the other. And I'll try my best to do it with this one, because I think that would just look really simple, a bit angry starfish-like. And I think it would look really interesting. Then same with the top here. Have all this lighter. Obviously it's just a mess right now, just trying to get the basic idea. Yeah, I actually really, really like that. Not too sure about the base colour though. Could go pure black. No, I think it needs to be blue as well. Maybe more of a purple? No, I think, yeah, I think it's a just a blue, just a bit darker. That's all. But I still want it to pop, is the issue. Something like that, maybe? That does look pretty cool from a distance. I'm definitely going to stand out to the other colours. Similar to the Corn's Forge, stands out a lot from the Malal's Wrath. I'm sure no one was yelling at me at all, but it turns out there's a fall off for the damage of these beams. I was thinking that when I watched the last fight, and yeah, there is. So... It's minus 25% per beam, but that does seem to change a little bit as it goes. By the fifth beam, it's doing one third damage. So we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. So what I'm going to do is split it into three rather than splitting it into two. That way the fall off is going to be drastically reduced. There will still be fall off, but I don't want the laser opening bigger than this. It is a shame because that does mean I will have to lose out on this centerpiece of armor, which would have been so good. But we do have all the shields, we do have the armor everywhere else. Yeah, it should still be fine, honestly. And if it becomes a problem, we can always just change up this front section. It isn't actually a huge section I would have to change up, so I'll go ahead and do that right now. Shouldn't take too long. There we go, three beams of destruction. Still looks really cool in my opinion, just a shame about the armor in the middle. I have to armor up this a little bit, but okay. Still not sure about the actual colour of the armour though. I think a much lighter background colour and maybe I'll thin out these spikes going in. Then try and have them raised. I'm going to get into one more fight with this thing to see how the difference is between these three lasers and the single. Well, the double. Ah, okay, so I'm going to order myself to move a little bit now towards the left. There we go. Because this keeps on trying to shift us. Okay. Overkill a little bit there. Just try and keep it as much in the centre as possible. I am going right for that core. I'm in a very slow motion right now, by the way, so don't let that deceive you for how much damage we're actually doing. How are we looking? Okay, one reactor is looking pretty bad actually. But their main reactor is just about to go. It's a race now to see if we can get there. If that reactor goes below, we haven't lost this fight. We just lose a chunk of our ship. If this reactor goes, they're done. 
Okay, so let's turn it a little bit since the enemy keeps turning us. Perfect. Now stay on track. I overcompensated there. That was a major mistake on my part. Hopefully not one's going to cost me. The reactor is now officially taking damage. And there we go. We called out the Death Rito before it could get to any of our reactors. Just about. The damage was definitely better because the negative modifier is less severe when split amongst three. Now what we lose though, of course, is that precise damage. It's not as concentrated. Okay, but I am still very happy with that. Let's get back. We can collect the corpse later. Honestly, I'm really happy with how this looks and I'm happy I finally learned how to do that shading scheme. So all the blue definitely looks like it's above the far, far lighter blue there. Oh, except this one little corner apparently I managed to miss, but of course as soon as I start actually talking, then it's instantly obvious. Uh, yeah, let's just go with that. So I'm going to do the same now with these generators. Essentially I want the generators to look above everything else even more so, so I'm going to put shading around that, even if it's already on the blue. And that should be... It. Actually... What would happen if we went like this? That would look a bit weird. It wouldn't quite fit with what I was just doing, but... I kind of like the stain colouring too. It's almost like it's glowing. Rather than using the normal shading, then we leave the normal shading underneath. Oh, actually, I quite like that. That is shocking. No, I think I still prefer it like this. So I spent like the last 20 minutes just adding paint, taking off paint, um, especially like different decals and everything else, and I just kept realizing I like it more like this, the more blocky look. So we just have shadows around the reactors, trying to make them look above everything else, shadows around the blue, trying to make it look like it's above the lighter blue paneling, and then just this dirty um, gold just along here, this pigment, which I think looks pretty interesting keeping it blue on the very corner there because i think it makes it pop more almost like the blue's been worn off by the lasers yeah i think i'll get into one more proper fight and then we'll call this an episode and in the next video we'll go to the new zone we'll have some fights with the other ships in tow or we could have one you know what actually change of plan we're gonna have one with the malal's wrath i love how fast this thing turns we're gonna have one with the malal's wrath it just can't strafe that's one thing it can't do tanking and then have the zinches i don't know what to call it yet go from the side and do some damage there of course we still have the ravens but they're not going to be fighting just at the moment oh yeah i forgot i sent out the forge to go and collect a corpse so okay there's a target area over there i'm not quite sure what that one is we'll grab that in a second but first do i have any bounties i've been killing so many random things no i think i've not actually killed anything of importance apparently Okay, you two. You should just really go ahead. Just a little bit off to the side. Okay. Let's see if we can find anything then. There's also an unknown signal over there. Maybe that way instead? Uh, or perhaps we should just go and find a new station and get some missions. Maybe that would be better. Well, this one kind of came out of nowhere while I was entering this territory, but I guess this is just what we're doing now. Kind of the other way around, this one tanking instead. If I do that, it should get it turning a little bit faster. Right now it's trying to reverse rather than turn. We are at absolute minimum speed, by the way, right now, so it may look slow, but it's actually not that bad. Okay, don't overcompensate. It is moving slightly, so I'm going to slightly turn to the left there. Ooh, cannon fire rippling there from the back as well, from the Malal's Wrath. Doesn't really matter which one's tanking, as long as the other one can get behind it, as you can see, the defences are going to really, really suffer. Now, of course, we could just make one super ship, but I really do think this is going to be more effective. Yeah, the enemy's lasers don't have a chance. They cannot get through their shields. Absolutely no chance. 
as ours break through theirs. They do have cannons and a little bit of EMP, but that EMP is not hitting through our weapon because of how we're currently tilted. So we have to make a choice now. Do I correct myself and do damage a little bit better focused, or do I stay tilted and thus not take any risk from these cannons and electric fire? I would say I take absolutely no risk right now because heavy cannon fire is on the way. Beautiful. And that's the power of friendship. And I'll repair from its corpse. Okay, that appears to be a swarm. Both of you stop. Not really keen on swarm fights of either of these crafts. This is going to be interesting. A back burn in there, just a couple of cannons, nothing too major. Looks like it's going into the wrath. You know what? Don't go any further forwards. Just let it move towards you. There are others on the way. You know what? No, don't even bother turning. The Wrath will soon have that in its sights and that will be gone. There we go. The Effigy, Horsefly. You go after the next one. Once again, the cannon fire will quickly deal with this. There's another one over there. You go that way. Split up, take them all out. One thing I've noticed is it's quite important to just tell the thing to stay still if you want it to turn with all of its thrusters. So no more moving backwards or forwards, only the turning. It's actually quite difficult to get this thing consistently in line of sight. Obviously what we want is just for it to be directly there, but it's a bit difficult to make that happen. Oh, this thing's significantly bigger. The Luma. That's crushing a lot of its stuff. Oh, it's a railgun, okay. A little bit of damage again. Wow, we're showcasing that it's incredibly annoying to fight this kind of craft. Meanwhile, the Wrath has defeated that. You can come back. Oh, was I just overcompensating the whole time? You know what, that was me. That was an inexperienced pilot. At that point, I could have just aimed it directly towards it and it would have been absolutely fine. I didn't need to keep on leading the shot. Absolutely my fault there. As soon as, it, as soon as it's on it for a second, it absolutely melted. Apparently also melted my speech in the process. Lots of little corpses around here. Haven't found another station still, which is a bit annoying. But honestly, I think it's about time we leave. I think we've harvested pretty much everything we can from this area. Uh, there's no more missions to really hand in, so I think I'm going to make sure everything is jump capable. The uh, the new craft certainly is, it just needs the uh, the material to do so. And then we'll go to a harder area. So with that, I think I'll be calling the video. Overall, I still think I've got a lot to learn about this craft and how to use it effectively. I definitely haven't built this correctly, to be perfectly honest. I think I will probably have a major retrofit soon, so I don't have so much... Um, negative in terms of the fall off i think it's called yeah there is fall off minus 25 percent per beam it's still clearly doing a lot of damage we could be getting a little bit more out of it especially in comparison to what we had in the very very first design in terms of using it i keep on leading my shots i think a little bit too much and that causes an overcompensation and then we end up just flailing left and right left and right which is obviously a very, very dumb thing to do. But I'll fix that as I use it more. Overall, though, I really like the craft. I like how it looks. It's a bit bulbous and weird. It's one of Zinch's crafts, and I think it makes a fine addition. So with that, 
Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Cosmeteer is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we go to a more difficult location. Now, with our birds, the wrath, the new ship, and the forge, all together as a happy little family. Carrying some corpses. Carrying some corpses.